Sacred Heart is proud to sponsor Pensacola Histories in recognition of the Daughters of Charity who brought their mission of care to Pensacola over 90 years ago. Hello and welcome to our continuing story of Pensacola, North America's first place city. In our recent episodes, we've been detailing how our county government evolved, beginning with the coming of Andrew Jackson in 1821, the establishment of a county commission whose primary responsibilities for many, many years were establishing and maintaining roads, bridges, and ferries. And this, this basically continued well into the end of the 19th century. But by that time, we began to have what we might call today compassionate services, which began, of course, with the poor farm in the 1870s and began to move a little bit more in that direction as the end of the last century proceeded. Much of the early 20th century was basically the same. But by the time we pass World War II, the county itself is beginning to change a lot because now it is growing, population is growing, and as this does, of course, as the population grows, this means the coming of subdivisions. And as subdivisions came, lots of changes came to the work of the county commission. Because as a subdivision was put in place, it required more roads. And basically, while the county itself was not in the sanitation and water business per se, each of these subdivision developers had to provide that kind of service. And each time that happened, there was an involvement some way of the county itself. Now, as we moved into the early part of the, eight, of the 1960s, the county also had a major change facing it in, in terms of health care. Uh, in the 1930s and 40s, the, we had seen here the coming of the tuberculosis sanitarium and then the beginnings of Escambia General Hospital. By the late 1950s, that hospital and older buildings on the west side was beginning to deteriorate badly. And so a, a, a referendum was held, uh, the voters approved it, and a new Escambia General Hospital was erected on West Leonard Street. This was, uh, and we'll kind of compress that story here just a little bit, the idea of, the, of another public hospital seemed most popular at the time, but by pure chance, into the mid-60s and then a little bit beyond that, we began to see, first of all, the evolution of Medicare and Medicaid, and this was accompanied by a tremendous uh, technological revolution for equipment that was put in hospitals all across the country. This equipment was very expensive, and so basically the cost of operating a hospital became very high for the county, and by the time we reached the 1970s, the county commission was running serious deficits, and over the next 15 to 18 years, those deficits its rose, and finally in the early part of the 1990s, Escambia General Hospital was finally closed. Now as we move a, a little bit beyond that, the, with, the, with the other things that were happening in the county, many of these things were good. For example, in the early part of the 1960s, plans were made for the creation of the University of West Florida. And the county worked diligently at this, the county commissioners did, helping to provide a thousand acres for the site for the university. And of course, that went on, went uh, on, in the ground uh, by the early part of the 19, uh, by 1967. And that fall, the first class matric matriculated at UWF. Uh, beyond that, of course, we begin to see this, this, the county beginning to spread out. By the time we reached the night, the late 1960s, uh, all the, the very basis of the automobile business began to change because population was moving north. And in 1966, a man named Bob Salter was the first to establish a, a franchise, his a Chevrolet franchise on North uh, Highway 29. And in 1966, thus we had the beginning of what we even today call Car City. And step by step, one by one, the other automobile dealers moved there. And of course, as this happened, this required additional roads, additional uh, subsidiary travel in that area, and consequently more expense for the county. But of course, that was part of it. As we move into the 1970s, another, another crisis began to evolve, not just for Pensacola or Escambia County, but for all over the country. By this time, the, the population of the United States was suddenly becoming aware of problems in pollution. And in 1971, 72, 73, the Congress passed the Clean Water and Clean Air Acts. Uh, both of those, of course, uh, placed great new responsibilities on the county to do things that would help uh, clean up what was already in, uh, in a very poor condition in some parts of our county, and of course to work with the industries and other parts of the, of the community to overcome uh, water and air pollution. Now, as this happens, beginning in the 1970s, we begin to see a new movement which was going 
going to be a, a requ require a great change. And that movement, of course, was with the, the development of sewage treatment plants. Many of these new subdivisions that were being built all over Gambia County, uh, uh, the developers put in their own uh, primary sewage treatment equipment plants. And these were primary systems. And after a few years, it became obvious that uh, all of these combined were beginning to pollute waters and streams. And consequently, the movement began across the way for Pensacola as a city or Scambia County as a county to begin to do something to combine all of these, uh, all of these resources into a single source so that the, the best possible treatment could be given. And so step by step, uh, work began on this. Uh, one by one, the county did uh, acquire some of these uh, subdivision uh, tr treatment plants and put them in, into a slightly better system. But finally, in the early part of the 1980s, the city and the county combined with legislative assistance and created a new body which at first was known as the Escambia County uh, Utility Authority, which in turn took charge of all of the water and sewer production, at least in the lower part of the county, and uh, through the, at least as far as uh, uh, both of those services were concerned, also within the city of Pensacola. So ECUA came on board in uh, 1981. The county divested itself of those holdings that it had in this way, and uh, worked with the, count with the ECUA and the city to make a, to a broader, uh, more effective uh, situation. Well, as all this was happening, of course, we were beginning to have more problems with something else called drainage. Every time a subdivision came on stream, it seemed that the, the runoff of waters coming down roads and uh, across other properties caused new problems. And so before the next 25 years and even into the uh, well into the 21st century, the county faces the problem of drainage control. And this was, of course, part of uh, another activity that was uh, enforced uh, across the state that the county then was forced to, to create what became known as a comprehensive land plan, which meant uh, not just uh, water and sewage, of course, but, but drainage of all kinds, and then all of the other functions with, with, for which the county was responsible. The land plan took several years to develop, and, and of course, the commissioners worked very diligently at it. And as each one of these things pro pro progressed, of course, each one of them cost money. And as, as a year by year passed, we began to see, the, of course, the, with the population growth, this was in part uh, taken care of that way. But year by year by year, the, the amounts of money that were assessed uh, as property values and then the uh, collection of taxes just kept going up and up and up. And what had been uh, at the turn of the 20th century, where the, the county had collected uh, something less than $100,000 a year in taxes. Now this was escalating two and three times that, that amount because the, the needs were, were there. Okay, as we move also through the 1970s, the county and all of the other basic services in the community, or governmental services that is, came together and said, well, it's time for us to consolidate all of these to make these services more accessible to the average taxpayer. And so the plan went forth to create what became known as the governmental complex downtown. And of course, this required the purchase of a large segment of property downtown, and this was finally uh, uh, established early in the 1970s, and began the, the construction began with the, the building of a new a county courthouse, which was built, of course, along uh, West Government Street, and that was building number one. The state followed with a, a, a building of its own, and uh, the, the only one that really fell back was the, was the school board. They decided they did not wish to, uh, to become, uh, to spend the money to be part of this, and they did not. Okay, the, the the city, of course, did proceed. They built their new city hall in the mid 18, uh, 1960s. And the, uh, along the way, of course, the, the uh, courthouse uh, became so active a place that it had to be enlarged. Uh, and, and, of course, this was done uh, a little bit later. When we talk about county buildings, now we're going to jump ahead just a little bit in our story into the early part of the, uh, the 21st century. Because by that time, County government was growing step by step every year in, ter in terms of numbers of employees and of additional services being rendered to the public. And so the decision was made that, they, uh, that we were going to begin to draw, draw all of the services, all the, all the constitutional offices, all of the basic uh, county services into, a, if possible, closely into a single unit. And so instead of having uh, various uh, services here, there, and everywhere about the city and the county, a new plan was made to 
per to acquire all of the land within a square block, which was bounded by government, uh, Palafox, Intendencia, and Bailet. And a new plan was put forth that cost about $22 million to do so, but all of these buildings were, were improved or, or, or re actually rebuilt or new, uh, built new ones uh, established. And uh, about three, about the, the year 1987, or 18, 2007, the new co uh, complex of, government, of county government was in place and is still as functioning there today. Now, we, we have so many other things that the county has done in, in recent times. We want to we just remember a few of them because they are highlights. For example, the question was, how are we going to pay? How is the public going to pay for a lot of these things? And so there are some acronyms that kind of come on stream with this. The, the local action, local option sales tax was one, something that was approved by the voters. The second one was a, a local option gasoline tax, which added additional money for providing roads. Uh, then, of course, the, the county, of course, was to be part of the economic development program for the area. And along the way, one of the things that they did, was to, the commission did, was to acquire the old Ellison Field, a, a neighborhood. Air uh, Aviation uh, Auxiliary Field north of the city, and that became Ellison Industrial Park. And then that was followed by a second uh, industrial park at, uh, in the area called Marcus Point. And uh, of course, the county has done this in both of those parks, and a third one in progress uh, have been very successful for the community. Now, in addition to that, of course, there, there have been uh, some other buildings acquired, and there's been all sorts of, of action desired by people across the county. And we this is where the county and, and the developers and others have run into some problems. Problems. Because as we proceeded, and this, these of course have been headlines across the area for, for many, many months, uh, various environmental elements began to Im, uh, uh, be drawn as, as a, an impediment to, uh, to so-called progress in construction of roads or, or subdivision. Uh, people became very familiar with, of course, with the beach mouse and some of the other uh, animals which would be put at risk if other construction proceeded, and consequently uh, certain things slowed down. There have been some other problems too. The county has, of course, had to worry about about uh, pro uh, storms and damage and all sorts of other things. And by the time we reached the year 2000, the county had 282 buildings, which it owned and were insurable. That's a, a lot of money, of course, and, and this was something that uh, uh, people just had to take care of because by now the, the county itself had insurable, this is all of the people living in the county, had roughly $415 million worth of, uh, of excuse me, for $415 billion worth of properties, and these brought in an annual tax revenue to the county ad valorem tax of about three hundred and fifty million dollars. By the time we move into the uh, into the latter part of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the twentieth century and into the twenty first, we began to run into some other problems too. Some of the investments that the county had uh, uh, were put into in, at one point in the nineteen ninety we put into a what seemed to be a very high return uh, investment ta uh, technique called derivative bonds, and that that did not work out too well, unfortunately, and we the county lost. Uh, something like $15 million in it. And then shortly after the beginning of the 21st century, uh, four of our commissioners became involved with some land purchases and sales, which turned out to be, uh, well, let's put it this way, not exactly what they should have been. As a result of that, the governor removed four commissioners from office and replaced them. And, the, but it, and it took a good many months for this, this uh, political scar to heal over, but and happily it has done so. Well, Moving into the into the 21st century, we've had a number of events which were, of course, help complete the story for for the county. Uh, hurricanes were the were at the at the peak here. In 2004, the terrible hurricane Ivan swept across the area, and causing millions and millions of dollars worth of damage for for citizens, for for residences, for buildings, and for the county itself. Uh, it cost well over a hundred million dollars to repair the damages there. Uh, working with uh, F, with FEMA, and where the county had to, of course, em employ. Many Many different uh, organizations to help clear away brush, dispose of it, and then make plans for improvement and, and restoration. And then, uh, if that wasn't enough, the following year came Hurricane Dennis, which again was well not quite so uh, so much a a, a, a problem as, as Ivan had been. It nonetheless was serious, and it helped to pr promote why we had to change and move the sewage treatment plant, which was the kind of the control for E C Way, and move it outside of the city limits to the north. Which, as the 21st century has proceeded, that has has been in progress and as we make this episode recording the, today that project is almost completed so county government has gone a long way from andrew jackson to the year 2009 but nonetheless it has grown and grown satisfactorily and it's a I think it's a nice to appreciate how much county does for each of us